So you've heard my story. Now, I want to hear yours. Is that enough? Woo! It feels like forever since I filmed and I know you guys miss me. The amount of comments and messages I've been getting. You guys made me feel special. I had to take some time off. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't have no excuse. I don't have no reason. But for my mental health, I really just had to take a step back from filming um, altogether. To be honest, not even just filming, I've been taking a step back from everything, just from life. The only thing I haven't taken a step back from is being a guardian to my niece. That's the only thing that I can't take a step back from. But everything else in my life, I've just said, nope, don't want to, not going to, who gonna check me boo. To be honest, I'm still going through what I've been going through. I've still been struggling a little bit mentally, but I'm putting myself back on track. Like, you guys don't even understand it was bad. Like, I weren't eating. I'm eating now though, I'm eating now. I even didn't speak to my therapist for about two weeks, two and a half weeks. I've spoken to him now though. I've put a camera on in, in how long? I'm finally doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which is giving you guys content to watch. So I'm not 100 myself yet. I would say I'm about an 85% back there, but I'm getting there and I'm, you know, doing what I've got to do. So we back in this thing, I'm gonna read some stories. You guys know the drill. You guys have sent me in your stories via the email right here and I'm just gonna say these stories have been crazy. They've been getting crazier and crazier. And just when I don't think it can get worse, it gets worse. I'm considering turning this into like a little, um, like a little talk show, maybe like a little, imagine me and a guest. And instead of me reading the story, you're telling the story yourself. You're actually telling your story. And I'm just here, a listening ear, chiming when necessary. We have a cup of tea maybe and or over a glass of wine and just have a nice little i think it'll be cute i don't know let me go what do you guys think because i do like the fireplace gown situation that we have going on i do really like it but i don't think i want to film in my house anymore i think that's another reason why i weren't filming and why i took so long off i'm not feeling inspired at home i'm not feeling like i want to work at home when i'm at home i'm literally laying down on my couch or on my bed that's it that's how i've been feeling lately so i feel like i need to get out of my house and film somewhere else. I don't know, maybe I can still do it like this somewhere else, but I just thinking of different ideas, things to explore. And I've been chatting off my face for way too long. You guys know I don't do up the chattings in these videos and that's why you guys love them because you're like, we love this. You just get straight to the point. But I haven't seen you guys for a while so I had a little bit to say, but let's get into the video now. This video is a paid partnership with BetterHelp. I personally use BetterHelp. When I mention my therapy, that's what I'm referring to. I do online therapy with BetterHelp. And like I said, not speaking to my therapist for about two and a half weeks, after I spoke to him this week, I felt such a huge feeling of validation that I needed in this moment, in this headspace that I'm in right now. I just needed to know that the way I felt was okay, it was validated, it was normal, um, it was acceptable because I honestly was going mad in my own head because so much was happening around me. So many situations, different situations with different people, so many different things happening around me. All of these things aren't necessarily positive, they're negative things. And not only am I dealing with the, the negative feelings of these things, but I am still having to exist in the space of these negative people and think, does that make sense? So I was having a tough time, but once I spoke to my therapist, child, I felt so good. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I just felt so switched on, if that makes it. That's just how I personally felt. And BetterHelp did make that possible because the therapist I have now wasn't always my original therapist. So with BetterHelp, you fill out a questionnaire and then they assign you a trained therapist in less than 48 hours. If you don't feel like your therapist is a the right fit for you, that is completely fine because you can switch your therapist at no extra charge. You can choose to have your therapy sessions as a text chat, a phone call or video call. So there's options. You don't have to, you know, be on video or face to face with someone if you're not comfortable doing that. You can just do a therapy session through text. BetterHelp connects you with a credentialed therapist that is trained to just listen and give you unbiased advice. If you think therapy might be useful to you, consider BetterHelp. You can use the link in my description box or go to betterhelp.com forward slash daily Diana. Clicking my link does help support my channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. 
Therapy has honestly helped me process a lot of different thoughts that I'm having every day because I feel like every day I have a different thought, a different feeling, a different emotion, and it's hard to juggle all of this. A lot's going on inside of it, yeah? A lot is going on. And speaking to my therapist definitely makes it much easier for me. I wanna shout out and give a big thank you to BetterHelp for supporting my channel. Now let's get into the video. So this story is called he was recording us while intimate without my consent. Hey Diana, this is a story of how I met my nightmare in human form. One who absolutely destroyed my trust for others and confidence in myself. We were quite young. I had just turned 18 and I was finishing sixth form. I hadn't been in any relationship yet, so I was quite excited to get out there and meet someone. During these times, Snapchat had just launched. And through a friend of a friend, I came across this guy and I thought he was cute. I added him and he was fast to hit me up. We started talking and talked quite a lot until eventually we decided to meet up and we did. One thing led to another and we became quite close. Flash forward into a few weeks of dating, he starts asking for nudes. I wasn't comfortable doing this. I also just had a lingering feeling it was a bad idea regardless of how much I liked this guy. He didn't stop pressuring me, which was a huge red flag, and I didn't give in nor pay any mind. I just joked it off. Around the same time, I would realise he was always flirtatiously commenting under other girls' half-naked Instagram posts, as I would once in a while see his name under people I knew. This all got swiped under the rug, as we were only dating and I was naive. Once we became a couple, when using our phones together, I would realise he would have many notifications going off from women. Being confused, I confronted, but he of course gaslights me and tells me that they are female friends and I have no right to be jealous. Bear in mind, one of his female friends was underage. She was 15 at the time and he would love boasting about how she has this cute crush on him, but he would consistently be out with her and her mum having dinner. And her mum? That is weird. Why would you be out with her mum and her having dinner all the time? Her mum? Sorry, you know when sometimes things just leave you speechless? When I read these stories, I'm reading these stories for the first time. So these are my first reactions to hearing these things. Sorry. I'm just, yeah, what? Some time goes by and I grow suspicious. As he is showering, I see his phone on the bed. Knowing his phone passcode, I go through it. You wouldn't believe it. My heart sank, nudes upon nudes, as in from underage girls, from students, from older women. I couldn't even snoop further and read any of the chats as I just completely lost it. I felt so betrayed. These were fresh chats from yesterday night. It hit me. That time he asked for my nudes, there must have been so many other women he asked from that night. I threw chaos. When confronted, once again being naive, I listened to him. He tried making it seem like it's a regular thing men do, yet he was so utterly ashamed. He pinned it all on some addiction. He said, they always have an addiction. They always have an addiction. I'ma see the lady, I'ma speak to the lady. He pinned it all on some addiction he said he has. He promised to apparently cut this all out, blah, 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 as I was important to him. To show his dedication, he even opened up this folder in his images to show that he has a collection of nudes from his previous encounters of women throughout the years and how he is going to delete it. Utter shock, yes I forgive. Man took out the archive of all the nudes he's collected over a sad little life and said, look. I got this and I'm going to delete it. That's almost like back in the day when guys used to have a little black book and they'll have all their numbers in it and then they get with someone they're like, I'm going, I'm going to throw away my little black book. Why do you have a little black book? Why do you have a collection folder of nudes? Let's start there, you creep. As soon as these men realize that they're creepy, it's not a man thing, it's not sexy, it's not normal, it's weird. You're weird, you're a creep, pervert, yeah? Claim your title, this is not a man thing. You are a weirdo, it is a weirdo thing. Loser creep, weirdo, man loser, weirdo, <laughs> weirdo. Time goes by and one night as I'm sleeping over we become intimate. Our intimacy was always about his pleasure, quite rough and anything to please him. It's dark. The only light coming in is from the TV. <laughs> As he is doing what he does from behind me, I seem to catch a beam of bright light in the corner of my eye. I'm confused. Is that a flashlight, I think to myself. As I try and turn to see, he shoves my head to the pillow. I try and lift again with force. He isn't allowing me to see anything. In confusion, I didn't seem to think of 
much as I knew him to be quite rough anyway, but it made me very uncomfortable, uncomfortable enough to not say anything, just have it be over with. Few days later, I am being intimate with him. I sense a bright light in the shadows. This time I look up and see this guy is filming me on his phone. I stop, grab the phone out of his hand. I ask, what are you doing? He asks me what my problem is and how I'm overreacting and it's not harmful. Just filming me so he can replay it later. I explained how I haven't consented to this and I want him to delete it immediately. He deletes it while gaslighting me pinning it all on how I am just sensitive. I felt my privacy was invaded. I asked about the previous time I believed he also took a video, but he denies, saying this was the only time. Till today, I have no idea where that footage is. Now that I'm older, I'm able to look back and put the dots together. He used to have this group chat. I would catch him in there where him and all his male friends would talk. They would send photos and videos to one another that they took of other women being vulnerable. They would discuss them like they were objects. Again, saw the group chat, just never thought it was he was actually participating until now. I wouldn't be surprised if I had ended up there without realization. Like always, I forgive. Not understanding my boundaries as a woman. Oh my gosh, sickly sick. You see that group chat? That man group chat, yeah, yeah. Ladies, th that group chat exists, you know? That group chat there exists. I've seen this group chat with my own eyes. I've seen the manly group chat where they talk about women like they're objects and send pictures, send videos, brag about cheating on their flipping girls and their women. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Flashing forward, it's almost a whole year together now. I'm starting to become numb and feel like a doormat. He didn't put a stop to speaking to other women and exchanging nudes. He had even once admitted to cheating physically with a female friend at a park one night. So disgusting. I couldn't even believe this was who I was in a relationship with. That girl was dusty too, absolute chav. It's always the chavs, isn't it? This caused a whole argument to which he became quite abusive, throwing objects at me in his house, saying I was aggravating him. Even in other previous little arguments, he would punch the wall or break something. They love a punch a wall, innit? Innit? They love a punch a wall, innit? Oh, but whose who's deposit is it coming out of? Ooh, ooh. It ended up with us agreeing to go on a break. The break meant we were single, but rethinking whether we still wanted to try again. I started talking to someone new during this period. This guy was attractive, charming, and sweet. However, on both the dates we went on, we just never actually ended up clicking. Overall, it was a nice experience. Out of him, I was able to get some spicy makeout sessions and some knowledge on the fact that there are better guys out there. However, it didn't stop me from going back to the guy I was on a break with. We made amends. One night, sleeping at his, we was watching TV and I drifted off to sleep. I got woken up to a slam at my face. With panic, I try and grab consciousness to understand what is happening. I realised the phone got thrown at my face. He was screaming, oh him, yeah? You've been cheating, yeah, dirty slag? I replied with, huh? I was so utterly confused. I then realised my phone was open to previous Snapchat messages of the guy I was speaking to while we were on a break. I started speaking my truth. He didn't care. He was in manic mode. It was apparently the end of the world. He was now telling me, I'm going to call him and tell him what a dirty slag you are. He grabs my phone, calls the guy. I was hoping he wasn't going to pick up, but he does. He starts telling the guy on the phone how I've been cheating. I was screaming and crying. I haven't, I haven't. I felt so violated. He he wanted all of this just so he could feel all the misery he put me through was invalid now. As I'm screaming to defend myself in cries, he puts his hand on my neck and shoves me against the wall telling me to shut up. He hangs up the phone, throws it on the floor, lets go of my neck and walks out the home. In tears and shock it ended there. I never ever wanted anything to do with that guy again. Years later, he was still trying to reach out to me, get me back, telling me he will come to my home if I don't respond. Yet I avoided and things slowly faded away. Never Ever, ever again. I am happy now, I am older, I am wiser, found my purpose, found self-love and boundaries, and most importantly, I am in a loving relationship with my fiance, who is the most beautiful and kind soul. I wouldn't change my life one bit. Otherwise, I would not have crossed paths with this person now. However, still healing. I wish you the best, Diana. I felt I really could relate to you. And the heavy on the still healing part. We still healing, child. And give yourself as much time as you need. I always love the stories where it ends with, I am so happy now with my new man. That is the happy ending I love. Because after reading about the, the shit people put us through, it just feels that much sweeter in it to be like, yeah, now I'm happy. Yeah. With my good, good man, yeah. And I give my good, good man the good, good things. My good, good husband. My good, good fiance, yeah. My good, good swarm, yeah. <laughs> 
All right, let's get into this. Diana, Diana, Diana. I've just been watching the wig snatch episode and thought it's finally time to tell you some stories. Although, if I give you a rundown of the whole six years, the video would be hours long. So I'm gonna skim the worst parts. This is why I said I need to do the setup where you guys just come on, come on and we just talk about it. Because I feel you, trust me, even with me and my story, if I was to tell you guys everything. <laughs> I've just turned 27. So rewind six years to when I was 21. At the time I worked in foot asylum and this one man, let's name him P, came in day after day trying to get my number. Weeks later, I gave in. We met up a few weeks later, one evening, and I never left. We would do everything together. I would stay with him every night, go to work in the morning, and go straight back to him and be his little rider, going about his errands with him. You said his little rider. Girl, was he, was he, um, did he shot? <laughs> I fell madly in love, and soon after my 22nd birthday, I fell pregnant with our daughter. Right in this has given me the worst anxious belly ache ever. That's how you know the trauma is traumaing. <laughs> During those first 12 weeks, I was so petrified of miscarrying. I wanted this baby more than anything in the world. My dad was diagnosed with terminal cancer the same week I found out I was pregnant. My baby felt like a gift from him to make sure I'd be okay when he passed. He passed when she was six months old. Anyway, one day I'm at work, around seven weeks pregnant, and he texts me to say a girl has just called him to tell him she's pregnant with twins by him. I completely broke down. I was angry, hurt, confused, and he was so nonchalant. When I questioned it further, and who was the girl, and where are they, he would just say, I don't know. Then things were pretty uneventful until our daughter was about 18 months. We were having dinner at my mum's house one night when I looked at his phone that he'd placed on the kitchen side to see him messaging his ex. I was livid. I'm sure I had steam coming out my ears. I confronted him and he said that they were just friends and that before me, they had business ventures together so they keep in touch. I said I didn't care, and you have a family now, to which he replied, well, I don't want you anymore. What? That same night I brought up the twins, supposedly fathered by him, I said, you've broken my heart tonight already. Just tell me the truth about your other kids. He replied, oh, that. I just said that to stress you out to try and get you to miscarry. Whoa! Man said, I just said that to stress you out, to try and get you to miscarry. How can someone be so evil and wicked? From that moment, I should have left and never looked back. But look at me, what a clown. We were broken up for about a year here, but he soon made his way back into my life. During that year, I dated. He made it a misery by questioning me constantly and eventually threatening the other man once he found out who he was. So that soon ended. Where the hell did he get off? I wish he would have got a restraining order against him. I'm sorry, I would call the police. I'm calling the police on you. I really am, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm calling the police on you. We got back together and things were pretty stable until his nan died. He completely lost himself. He already had a temper and anger issues, but these were amplified a million times through his grief. He was hard to be around. New Year's Eve after she passed, so it had been three months, we went to a friend's house. He was so drunk and upset that he wouldn't see his nan in the new year. I comforted him and we went home. We argued on the way home and an argument carried on into when we went to bed. Suddenly that night his rage took over and he punched me in the nose and I ran into my mum's room. She told him to leave the house and he refused. He called me a liar and every other name under the sun until my mum threw his shoes and phone out the door so he would leave. The real MVP. Come on mumsy. The next day he begged me to hear him out. I listened but said this is going to take so much reparation. A year after that we were still working on things but moved in together in a place of our own. The worst mistake of my life. He would constantly belittle me, cause arguments, degrade me in front of our door and go through my things, not find anything and still accuse me of shit. Through all of this and the time of us living together, he was still texting his ex, the same one from before. And time after time, I'd beg him to block her and he wouldn't. One day he came to the park where I was already with our door and was shouting in front of everyone how I was such a whole fat, ugly for no reason. I believe he was projecting his shit onto me. He had completely lost his mind and so had I because a few weeks later, another positive pregnancy test. I was pregnant with our son, August, 2022. Things were still so bad. I was scared living with him, away from my family. He was going to Ghana for, ooh, he's Ghanaian.
he was going to Ghana for Christmas and told me he was going to take our daughter. I refused because he had never cared for her on his own. She would hate it and would want me. He threatened to kidnap her and take her. So I booked myself a flight with her to compromise. Whilst in Ghana, I was 20 weeks pregnant. And oh boy, buckle up. His apartment had two bedrooms. He was in one as he was out late every night and myself and my daughter was in the other. One day, I went to his shower and there laid on the windowsill was a cock ring. I was disgusted and confronted him straight away. He said it had been in his pocket since he last saw me in London and it just fell out his trouser pocket the other day. Bullshit. First of all, I washed the trousers in question for him before he left. Another day, I was in his room getting our daughter's iPad and walked past his suitcase. My mum had borrowed him a suitcase for his trip. To my surprise, the pocket of his suitcase was full to the brim with condoms. Again, I confronted him straight away and he said I was childish and insecure. The first story he gave me was the condoms were old and that they had been in the suitcase for years from his trips back in his bachelor days. Bullshit, because it was my mum's suitcase! Then, the second story, apparently his boys had been giving them to him as a joke and he'd been giving them out to them when they needed them. I said, I thought you were a drug dealer, not a condom. So he was a drug dealer. I knew it. I thought you were a drug dealer, not a condom dealer. I'm not stupid. I knew shit had been happening whilst he was there before I flew out, but I put on a smile and an act for our daughter. Fast forward to April, I'm giving birth to our son. He makes the birth a misery by shouting at me in the hospital that it was taking too long. I'm gonna punch this man in his trachea. I'm not even gonna lie, I want to punch him in his throat. To which I replied, if this is inconvenient to you, you can leave and I'll get my mum to keep me company. He got in my face and shouted, am I stupid? with everybody watching while I'm in labor. Since my son was born, the verbal abuse never stopped. I ended things completely a month ago and haven't, oh my gosh, only a month ago. So this year, you ended things this year as in last month, as we are in, where October, I can't even speak. As in, we are in October, 2023 right now. You ended this just last month, S September? Sept you ended this September? and I haven't heard from him since, including child maintenance money. My son is four months old now. My daughter's happy and healthy. I'm healing and trying to find a new home for me and my babies as we're staying with my mum for now. On the morning of my 27th birthday, a few weeks back, I was swimming in the cold sea. And as I walked out, I found a stone with peace and love written on it. I believe that's a sign from God and the universe of what is to come this year for me, hopefully. This is honestly just a snippet of some of the things P has said and done. I could write a 10 part novel. Love you, Diana. Keep up the amazing content. You deserve the world. Oh my gosh. First of all, I, I agree to, I believe that that stone you found was a sign. I am a heavy believer in the universe giving you signs and things like that. And I just want to say, I'm so glad you've left, but it's been very fresh. I appreciate you sending your story in because that's hella fresh. You're still going through it very freshly. You still had the courage to write all of this down because I know writing this, me personally writing all of this down, I probably would have been in tears the whole time. So thank you for sending this in. Do check in with me, do check in with us. Um, I don't know about you guys watching at home, but I definitely do want to hear from you and I hope everything goes well. I really do. No looking back. No looking back. It's been a month, so obviously he hasn't contacted yet, but it's been a month and he sounds crazy. He sounds like a madman, so I don't put it past him to, to come back, but there's no going back. No going back. That's all I'm going to read for today. I will try not to take so long of a break next time. Start getting my content back out there for you guys. I've just been having a moment, like I said. I do feel more like myself actually after just reading those two stories and filming a video. I do feel more like, oh, okay. I should have been sitting in this chair. But I will see you guys soon. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to send me a story, you can send it to the email address right here on screen or I'll leave it in the description box below. And I'll see you in my next video.